the original NES Bionic Commando, of course, it's not the original game. I mean, they, they, it was a it was a an arcade game before, but the NES version is without a doubt the version uh, from from the 80s that really deserves like a remake because it has the unique enemies and the storyline and everything. It's just coherent. Everything in the game is is something that you can develop and continue building on top of. Also, that's the version that I think most people remember as the cult classic. The original game has this kind of really 80s tacky tackiness to it that we really wanted to embrace. I really like that kind of feel to it, the bright colors and the shades and everything's like the hero, uh, the heroic uh, guy running into the sunset in the in introduction sequence, like the, the prologue of the game. The music of the original game is also, I mean, one of the memorable areas. One of, I think, the reasons why it's, it's, it's remembered so fondly. I collected all the screenshots from the original game and uh, pixelated them so you can clearly see what kind of color scheme they were using. The colors in the original are really saturated, really high colors. The reason for this, I believe, was the uh, fact that they needed to separate the character from the background. Uh, everything in a 2D game is really uh, hard to read uh, due to the fact of low detail and really tiling textures and everything. So we wanted, of course, to keep the uh, the same style, not only because we like the actual colors, but also because we need the same kind of readability in our game. Uh, the characters in the original game was, uh, conceptually speaking, very slim. Uh, they were uh, all a bit sci-fi army style, and that's something that uh, I wanted to you know, create a sort of new approach to. While having few characters, I want uh, very diverse um, visual or yeah, conceptual impact on each each character. Rad Spencer, the Bionic Commando, represents the street 80s. Um, well, with the police jacket, ar the army meets uh, you know, cool 80s guy. Like this guy goes to war in style. Yeah, exactly. That's that's the that's the whole idea. And uh, the reference for this was. Um, Iceman from Top Gun. Oh yeah. We had a uh, Marty McFly, all sorts of uh, you know '80s uh, icons, icons, legends. While Super Joe, we try to keep a more uh, a specific American touch to. He has this kind of yeah, he's the American Sam hero. Elliott uh, cowboy uh, approach. Um, while the Wired Gunner is some sort of more uh, uh, Austrian. Yeah, Austrian uh, <laughs> Lederhosen style combined with RoboCop. Uh, design elements, which is uh, also really, yeah, really something I enjoy doing. The bosses of the original NES game, I mean, they weren't that great. Game Gameplay-wise, they didn't work, really, so they had to be completely redesigned, and I mean, that ties into the visual design as yeah, well. We needed first. completely new bosses that really used kind of the unique me mechanics of the, the, of the me gameplay, gameplay itself. Yeah, it's swinging, you know, you need to use the arm to beat the boss and kind of reveal the weak spot of the boss. And the really classic, uh, you can only shoot the boss on the red, big red bulb uh, thing. So we wanted to bring that into the game and, and also make sure that you always need to use the arm and the weapons to, to beat the boss. Yeah. And we went crazy with the bosses. Yeah, we really did. All the boss concepts, I mean, they started on the gameplay, as a gameplay concept. I had an idea for how the boss would, how we would fight the boss, and then I brought it to Jacob, and and then the visual, like the design yeah. of how it should look in detail, really took shape. Yeah, it was definitely a gameplay uh, governed uh, design process, uh, where the bosses in some cases might look odd, simply because they support a strange or unique gameplay. Uh, I had an idea of a boss where you would kind of unscrew bolts on the front of it and uh, uh, plates, shield plates would fall off and then you would reveal like the weak spot of the boss. Yeah, it is. <laughs> well, I, in the original there was a silly enemy, uh, um, I can't remember what, which area. but uh, Area that, 7. Yeah, Area 7 was. Uh, controlling a small tank of some sort. Yeah, some kind of machine device and that's something we just used as, uh, to ignite the inspiration for the siege machine. Uh, or all the bosses actually yeah. um, being controlled by small people. Still a, a element which is hilarious and needed to be, you know, taken care of in some, <laughs> some manner. <laughs> uh, working and collaborating with Capcom is wonderful, you know. It's such a, it's an honor working with a company that made so many great games that I played when I was a kid. 
uh, we have Gunsmoke, we have Mega Man, of course, we have DuckTales, all with great graphics, great music, great gameplay, everything that set the bar for so many genres. Uh, working with them and learning from their expertise and experience within making games and also being able to bring your ideas to the table and have them, you know, look at that and say, yeah, this is good, work with this. Uh, it's so enjoyable. People have been waiting for 20 years for a sequel or a remake of this game because they, they, I mean, the wire mechanic doesn't age, so it's timeless. The fan expectations are of course huge.